It's just ridiculous. They're trying to drive people crackers. Good evening. Audrey Smith is angry because her house, like hundreds of thousands of others in Britain, is suffering from the blight. The council has declared it substandard, and when they can afford to, they'll pull it down. The trouble is that Audrey wants to stay there and doesn't want to be moved into a council house. Now, you'd think at the present time, with limits on public spending, eating into housing budgets, that councils would be delighted to leave people like Audrey alone. And yet it appears they're not. Despite the fact that successive governments have encouraged local authorities to modernise rather than demolish their Victorian housing stock, whole communities go under the tracks of the bulldozer every year. It's estimated that more than a million homes in Britain are already blighted, with examples of whole streets under threat in virtually every British town. We've picked as an example the one-time mining village of New Cayo. Its local council, Derwentside, already has more problems than it knows what to do with, encompassing as it does the shattered steel town of Consett. But now it's facing a revolt from, amongst others, the residents of New Cayo's Windsor Terrace, angry at what they see as a breakdown of local democracy, a council plan to do away with this street and others nearby. Well, in Audrey Smith's front room at number 24, a group of local people affected by that decision will be joining us later for our live debate. But before that, our film report examines what one study has described as official vandalism, the destruction of a community against the wishes of the local people. Why do the council want to do it, and why do the people want to stay? Some people here for 30, 40 years, they live here all their lives, and they're quite happy to live here. They want to die here. Well, I've lived here for 50 years, and I wouldn't like to live anywhere else because everybody's so friendly. Everybody helps each other. I just don't want to be having to uplift and shift. I've had enough trouble in my lifetime without having to start with a lot of money. I mean, the, the money that people pours into the houses, they just want to stay here where they, they've got the neighbours, they know they can trust. Where if they go on a council house to sit, you don't know what you're getting next to them or anything true. else. I mean, they come and said, yeah, could I had to take your coal houses down. Council man came and said, I had mm -hmm. to put out counts, the coal houses and lavatories down at the yard and put a proper yard and then they would do what they could for. I did all that, cost us a gear. It's all left there now, isn't it? It is. Scandalous when well, you think about it. Well, they're not getting me moving, I may tell you. No way, they're the not getting me moving either. The so will have to lift us over. out. Exactly. No one in Ukiah wants the village to remain as it is. They want it improved. They want the opportunity of improving their own houses and they want the environment improved. Both of the last government, the Labour government and the Conservative government, have issued directives to councils to give encouragement and help to improving older properties. This council seems to ignore everyone's advice because they seem to have a divine right and they know best. What the people wanted was some help from the council, but the council have ignored all these pleas for help. And socially and economically, the, the, the council policy is wrong, you know? Just ignoring people. And that's who they're supposed to be representing, people. The community life is very strong here. You, you find that the, the families grow up, the children get married, and they move into one of the other streets in the local area. You know, maybe you have the parents living in one street and the children in another street. And uh, the community sticks together that way. It's, um, it's very close, everyone knows everyone else. Uh, one person's problem is another person's problem. And I think if they, if they demolish this area, as they're going to do, street by street, they'll scatter the community all over the place and it'll just be completely broken up. When you've lived in a, in a place as long as what I have, you know everybody by their first names. You can go out the street and you can talk to people, 
you know everybody that's here. You can go to the corner shop and you can have a bit chinwag. You know? You know everybody. And every time I think of the council, I could spit blood. They're trying to split the community right down the middle. They're taking something away from me that I don't want to be taken away. It's my home, and it's all I've got. I don't have a husband now. My husband was killed in a fire. And um, he worked hard for this house, as well as myself. I have a 15-year-old daughter. What would happen to her if anything happened to me? She wouldn't have any way to live. If they give me a council house, my, well, my way of living is going to drop one heck of a lot. I'll be on the bread line. In fact, I'll be lower than the bread line. And I'm just not going to stand for that. I'm living quite comfortably the way I am. I'm quite financially, I'm, I'm all right. I can manage to keep this home. It's paid for, it's my own. Why should the council put me out of this? for the sake of their demolition orders and put me in an 18 pound a week council house. I don't think it's right. We've tried to fight them, but it's just like talking to a brick wall. It doesn't matter what we try to do. They're bringing blockbusters straight in front of our faces. They've just got for dangling on a string like a yo-yo. We don't know when the houses are coming down. We just know that they're coming down in the near future. I'm so pent up about this, they're trying to drive everybody insane. You know, it's, it's just ridiculous. Well, let's face it, any pressure does harm people's health. And when you see it every day in here, like I have, and, and, and women, especially the women, it isn't fair, you know, really. And this hasn't just gone on for weeks, it's gone on for months, years. I mean, I know by myself. I had to go to the doctors when it first happened, this, because my health was bad. Really bad. You know, nerves. Nerves are bad. People didn't know about this till they went to either sell a house or buy a house. Then they found out there's five-year life on. And then that starts all the trouble. Yes. Who worry about this? Mm. I was a house sold up the street how long ago? About a year ago, for 800 pound. That's three, yeah, three bedrooms, you know. Well, that's what, it, that's what happens, isn't it? Eventually, and they put blights on houses, you can't sell them. And if you want to move, you have to give them away or just leave them, haven't you? You've got no other alternative. The first hint that New Cayo had the blight came four years ago, when Stuart Young tried to sell his house. He couldn't then, hasn't been able to since, and has lost three and a half thousand pounds. I've been under the doctor uh, for over two years now, and uh, I'm just managing to get over the bad period that I was in. Uh, I was on different types of drugs for quite a spell, like. I had a nervous breakdown. I was in hospital. How long it's going on, and we can't get uh, any satisfaction to actually when it's going to happen. Well, this is New Cairo. It's one of the former Category D villages in the area, which the council have now considered over a long period how the best should treat it. This plan just shows diagrammatic form what can be done. We're looking at taking out uh, terraces of houses that will be landscaped. And in diagrammatic form we've shown that where there's a couple of terraces taken out we can install new housing um, and similar at the end we are looking to put in infill housing into this area. This will be council housing. Well, at the moment, yes, but not necessarily. It could be any housing if private developers would be interested, but it's basically planned for council housing. And when will this go ahead? Well, the demolition, the acquisition and demolition of the slum clearance will go ahead over the next two or three years on the number of streets that have been agreed. Um, when it would be redeveloped now is unknown. The cutback in cash has meant that you can't really plan far enough ahead to include these uh, areas. Well, New, New Kaya has a, a tradition of being a, a tight community. Unfortunately, again, it was the 
uh, late uh, past century where they were built and the uh, structures themselves <coughs> are and many of them are in a very poor shape. Uh, the um, compulsory purchase order uh, has been applied for, uh, the scheme has been advertised as such, uh, which gives the uh, opportunity to um, owner occupiers to object or otherwise at a public inquiry. The properties here can be done up, renovated with, um, with four or five thousand pound grant. But it's going to cost the council quite a few thousand to demolish them quite a few more thousand to replace them and uh, they have to move into council houses. Quite a few of the people around here already own their own house. They don't want to go and live into council houses and to go into a council house you pay rent all your life and never own a stone. It's, uh, it's just no security or anything. Most of the money this year has gone into new build and into improvement works in our own houses. Unfortunately, that is far from sufficient to meet the needs that we have. Our new house building program has been reduced by half and our revitalisation program has been cut to about 30% of what we would like it to be. And the private houses of New Cairo are by no means the only ones in Doe and Side in need of care and attention. This is the Grove Council Estate, built between the wars and one of the developments worst hit by a lack of maintenance money. The irony is that whilst the council believes demolition is the only answer for many of the terraces of the old colliery villages, there are tenants here living in much worse conditions. The ceiling is terrible. All the dampness. Look at it. Would you like to live in this? Not me, definitely. I'm, I've been to the council trying to get a new house. <laughs> it's like getting something out of a gold mine. And what else, what else is wrong with the ceiling? Where well, well, they're all damp, every one of them are all cracked. The, that one in there, in that bedroom, I have to have 14 buckets down when it's raining. Right spread right across the floor. But even the newer council houses, like these in Langdale Way, homes built to the latest standards, are disliked by many of their tenants. The houses are all, all right in the summer if you're having warm weather all the time. They're fine. But as soon as you get the cold weather, you start getting the damp. The damp rises from the bottom, comes right up, hits your living room first, your dining room, your kitchen, then it goes up into your bedrooms as the winter gets colder and wetter. Here you'll find a classic case of the council having got it wrong before. Houses equipped with the electric ceiling heating so trendy in the 60s and such a nightmare to tenants who've had to pay exorbitant electricity bills ever since. There's times when you get your pay and you think, now I'm not going to be able to pay electric and rent and buy me food and buy little Johnny a pair of shoes. So what do you leave? Your electric or your rent? If you leave your rent, you get evicted. If you leave your electric, you get your lights cut off. What do you do? Yes, we've been electric cut off since... March. No, March. We own £612. Uh, they put ceiling heating in, which is any fool. Yeah, the most how thick they are, they know that heat rises. Well, that's all right putting your heating on and your bedroom's been lovely and warm, but what happens when you're down here? They put the ceiling, uh, the thermostat four and a half foot up the wall. <coughs> so therefore your head and shoulders are lovely and warm and your feet's freezing. We rated A1 for central heated houses, for central heating that we can't afford to use. I have a mum and a dad and they both live in a colliery house. They have all the facilities, bathroom, you know, toilet the lot. And my mum wanted to take a council house and I thought she was, well at first I thought she was silly for not taking it. But now after living in these and seeing what other people's got to pay, such as my mum-in-law and them, I don't, I think my mum's, my mum's right for staying where she's at. I mean the rent, she has to pay rent where she's at, but it's not half as much as these will be. We're paying as much rates for our council houses as what most people are buying the houses and paying mortgages. So what could Derwenside Council do? This group of French visitors has come to look at a scheme in Macclesfield that could provide one of the answers. It's the general improvement area of Black Road, organised by community architect Rod Hackney. The houses were built between the year of the Battle of Waterloo, 1815, and 1840. So they're about 160 years old. It was started in 1973 and then it took 12 months for the residents and there's a hundred people in the scheme to complete everything you see here.
that there are 32 houses in the scheme. This is Black Road, General Improvement Area number one. Everything you see is new. That is the roofs, the walls, the pipes, the drainage, landscaping, the chimneys, the windows, the doors. And inside the houses, central heating, new stairs, new plumbing, new kitchen units, bathroom suite. Yeah, those, it is those, improvement. Those it's, it work. preserves and improves um, the community. The houses were in such a bad condition, there wasn't much to preserve. And the saving grace wasn't the houses, it was the community. That worked and it was that that had to be preserved. So that's why it's such a comprehensive improvement. It's now been going six years and as you can see it's been well looked after and well maintained. Official approval of these projects came in the European award that Hackney received this year for his second Black Road scheme. This scheme was started in 1975 and finished in 1979. Yes, the chimneys are all new. How much would have people bought the houses for? These are now worth about £13,000. Yes. And four years ago, houses were being sold for... Two thousand pounds in the and same scheme. Them for 2, About two thousand. But they had to pay as a improvement. They had to pay about three thousand pounds of their own money. <laughs> there are areas which we've identified now, which can't be supported because of the latest cutbacks. But if they were supported, would be gems in two years. They would be the equivalent of the schemes we have in Macclesfield and our other areas ideal places to live in, with the council enjoying the kudos that comes with success. Residents of houses in Derwent Sides Railway Street believe that they live in what could become one of those gems. At least it could, if they can get rid of the blight. Well, the, I mean, the council, they, they own number one railway street and have done for about four years. There was two or three offers from different people wanting to buy that house, which the council declined. And when they gained ownership, I mean, the first thing they did was uh, put breeze blocks and bricked up the, the windows and the doors. I mean, we were really dissatisfied. Visually, it's a very important house. We spent uh, three days painting sort of a very simple mirrors on the door and the window just to, to brighten up the, the, uh, the appearance. For a lot of people passing through the village, you know, that, that's the sort of view of the street they get. Basically, the external shell is fine. The roofs are straight. There's no, there's very little sagging. That means the the, um, the timbers under them are sound. Um, the walls have no major cracks in them. They need pointing, but they've settled. But you know, there's no doubt in my mind that the value of um, modernising them is obvious. First, because you want to live in them, the community wants to stay intact. The cost of modernising them would be about half the cost of knocking them down and rebuilding and making new ones. Yeah. Community architect Mick Pierce has already given residents enough confidence to take on the council, with help from the government's housing corporation. The housing corporation is right behind it. The finance for the, for the whole scheme is more or less guaranteed by this letter. But depending on the local authority declaring these houses 30-year life, yes by the council blocking you, you're actually preventing that money from being invested in this community and yes. in this area. And of course from the council loan report that we've got here, uh, they estimate the cost of rehousing one family at £15,000. Mm. There's 25 houses in the street, that's over £300,000. Um, when they look at the, the cost of, uh, of our scheme, uh, that makes, say, £20,000, £30,000 to do the street up. Uh, as opposed to three hundred thousand pounds to knock it down. Yes, ten times as much. Mm. Well, the houses themselves are belong to the last century. Uh, inadequate, uh, totally inadequate. Uh, the layout is bad with the uh, toilet facilities on the other side of the street, and to that extent, uh, they cannot be modernised in the existing structure, and therefore the. the advice which we've received is that demolition is the only cure. We've now got to the situation where in the private sector we can't give improvement grants to modernise older properties. 
The slum clearance that we've been doing has been severely affected because we're now in a position of doing only about 80 houses a year when we're programmed to do about a thousand houses in the next five years. So again, we're in a, a situation where our older houses are deteriorating because we can't give them improvement grants and we're not in a position to demolish them when the fabric decays. So we are now in a position where the children being born now are likely to have to live in houses which will not have bathrooms for the next 15 years. But if you drop the egg, if you drop the egg, you've got to come, you've got to go back to where you started. You've got to come back up here and start again, okay? No, it doesn't matter. We'll clean up the mess later on. Are you ready? One, two, three, go! The Railway Street people, like the people of New Cairo, are determined to fight the council for every brick of their community. Whatever housing policy is fashionable this year or next makes no difference, because they believe modernisation makes good economic sense. They know if they win, other groups will follow them. The council knows it too. But if they lose, Railway Street will be just the first domino to fall. But if these streets get knocked down, our streets will get knocked down. And these houses are completely nice. I think we should keep these houses. They want to live in their own houses with their own people. They don't want to go live all the old friends. It's a community, and not break a community up. Putting them in council houses, they're going to split them up, and that's the end of that. We lived in Colry Rose and the house I lived in, it was really nice. They knocked it down, then the other streets all followed automatically. And There's no Colry houses, water houses now. Everything's gone. That's, just, that's what's going to happen. I was doing the same exactly. People had should realise there's no atmosphere anywhere but where you created in these streets. And the Colry streets are the best streets to live in. Last Tuesday, the Environmental Health Committee of Derwenside Council decided Railway Street should be condemned. Well, Selby Walker, as we saw in that film, you're closely involved in Derwenside's housing policy. Can I ask you, first of all, why you've decided to press ahead with plans which would demolish part of New Cairo and demolish Railway Street, when it seems to be against government guidelines and when it seems to be bad economic sense? There comes a time in the life <coughs> of every uh, colliery village uh, when the structure and the fabric of existing houses becomes uh, that they're unsatisfactory. There is in uh, the very area where you're filming, the end house, we were petitioned by the residents of Newcaia that this house was in an unsatisfactory state, its structure was bad, and became an unsafe dwelling, and the council had to step in and demolish. Immediately office, opposite the back of the house in which the filming has taken place, there is approximately 10 houses that have been demolished, again because of stability, the problem of the houses have, would have been that in the 1968 period, those houses had to be knocked down. Again, there was a street at Sandhole, uh, again, where uh, demolition had to take place because of the unsafe nature of the structure. And therefore, we feel uh, that we need to inject new resources into the new Kai area by new building, and before that can be done, then we've got to take out some of the worst property. Uh, the rest of the properties, uh, which is, is scheduled uh, for improvement, will be improved, but unfortunately we're caught up in this uh, trap whereby the government are not releasing the funds in order to allow the plans to go. The reason why it hasn't been dealt with sooner was the residents wished to produce uh, some tangible effort in order to rehabilitate the properties. No scheme has come forward, and the council, after long deliberation, has found that they must go ahead and refurbish this particular area. Well, let's go across to Audrey Smith's uh, house in New Cairo and get the response of some of the people there. Uh, Audrey Smith. Well, the council have done nothing but put the blocks on us. I've said that in the film. And it's just damn ridiculous. They don't want to know about the community spirit, nothing. They're crying about they've got no money. But they've got money <coughs> to pull these houses down a double, treble, why? Ten times the cost 
it's going to cost for the environment of this place. They had the opportunity to accept the Cheviot Housing Association's claim to come in and re revitalise all the houses that were wanting revitalising. Well, Hannah, at the outside broadcast, what's your feeling on what, having heard Selby Walker um, talking about the need to revitalise? Uh, these houses are in good condition with a bit of help from the council. But the council is after cheap land. All he's after is to get the people stuck into his stinking council houses where the people don't want to go. Selby Walker, Selby Walker, do you accept this point, that there are people who, who don't want to live in council houses, who feel that possibly they can't afford to live in council houses? I accept that the community at New Kaya wishes to remain intact. We have a duty as a housing authority, and our officers are telling us that the, the structurally, there's some of these houses that doesn't come up to the standards of the health Well, why don't you swallow your pride and let it happen? <coughs> let us have the chance. You've thwarted our chance there. We had the Cheviot Housing Association in, and they weren't going to give you a... They weren't... It wasn't going to cost you half and quarter as what it is now. You're going to go into thousands and thousands and thousands to pull these houses down and claim comp pay compensation out where it would cost a, uh, just a, a small sum for a bit of environmental help. That's all we want. <coughs> but no, you want to go ahead, get in your little bulldozer and get cracking. Terry, Terry Hodgson, isn't there a certain amount of economics? I've heard a number of times in the film, uh, people like the community architect saying it will cost a lot less to renovate those properties uh, in Railway Street, for example, than it will cost to demolish and rehouse. No, I don't accept that. In a situation where we have to build new houses in order to rehouse the people we d displaced by the um, clearance proposals, certainly there is an argument there. But in Dermotside, we have a, a declining population, and our position is that we have <coughs> an excess of housing stock over the number of households. We can rehouse the people in um, Langley Park in particular without having to build one more house. So you've got more council houses than you need at the moment? We haven't got more council houses than we need, but if you have uh, um, regard to the fact that we have 34,000 houses in Derwentside, 15,000 council houses, which means 19,000 private houses, a lot of those private well, houses we are similar to the <coughs> houses that are being talked about in uh, New Cairo. In fact, Mrs Smith's property is uh, a house that we classify as fit, and oh, therefore... Gee, thanks. Gee, thanks. And you want to pull it down? That's ludicrous. Uh, yes, That's we regard. Idiotic. Yes, but we consider there are 29 properties in uh, Windsor Terrace. Well, 24, fair 24 of them are unfit. We can't the leave houses is, scattered all over. Too many council houses standing empty. The question of Railway Street. I mean, you're saying, are you really wanting the people that are watching this program to believe that the council is that hard pressed that it can't afford 31,500 pounds, which is all that is is being asked by the Railway Streets Association? for the council to put in, that it can't afford £31,500 to see tw 25 houses given a 30-year life, and it can afford 396000 Leave aside that you're saying you've got empty houses, we'll leave that out of the calculation. It still works out, you know, more expensive, even if you don't have to build new houses. That's a totally erroneous argument. The cost of £31,000 represents the cost of... Um, producing an environment within Railway Street which would be acceptable by modern standards. Remembering that Railway Street at the moment has open drains in the back street. The £31,000, as I said, just represents this uh, environmental <coughs> cost. The rest of the cost has got to be found from the people themselves, but mainly through their proposals through the Housing Corporation. The Housing Corporation expenditure will be something like £100,000 of taxpayers' money. Now, is it right in Dermotside when we have houses available that we should spend £100,000 on railway street. I'm, I'm sorry, can, can, I just take, can I take one at a time there? Can, can, I, can I bring in Alan Westwater? You've been trying to get in for some time. Thank you. Uh, what I'd like to say is that um, surely it's not the people of Derwentside's fault that over the past successive years, the council, this Labour-dominated council, has pursued the wrong policies and built far too many council houses. What they fail to understand is that people don't want to live in council houses. Even Selby Walker himself, who is adamant in pushing people in council, doesn't live in a council house. He's like the mayor of Dotland, don't do as I say, but do as I do. D don't do as I do, do as I say. Um, the residents of New Cairo have persistently stated 
that they want the same opportunity as other residents in other parts of the country. They want the right to have the right to uh, obtain grants from the council to improve their dwellings and they want the right to live where they choose to live. They don't want to be herded like cattle into places where the council want to move them. Salby Walker. Well, you know, Councillor Westwater, the independent who's just spoke there, you know, I've lived in my council house since I was married in 1940. And I purchased that council house because the council agreed to sell council houses. And therefore, to suggest that I am living in a private house. I've lived in the same house ever since I was married in yeah, 19... Well, could, 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 could I... Could, could, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Councillor Westwater, can I just te explore that point a little further? Not, not about you buying your house, but if I could, if I could ex explore the point that you've had the opportunity to do what you wanted to do and move into a house which you now own, or live in a house which you subsequently purchased. But what you appear to be doing is saying, we know better than the people of, Langley, of, of, uh, of New Kaya, we know better than the people of Railway Street. They want to live there. So why does the council know better than them? They're happy with, with their houses. They're happy to spend money and see the houses renovated. On the contrary, we, we feel that we would like to put some investment into it by building new houses in New Kaya, which, which gives new life uh, to it, and to give improvement grants to the houses which are fit and capable of taking the improvement grants. But there are a section of the houses in this street grid pattern system whereby in order to, in, to improve the environment, you've got to take these houses out which the expenditure on them wouldn't be worthwhile. This is a classic case. I mean, we've got here, we've got one council officer saying, you know, Mr. Hodgson is saying that there's an excess number of council houses and we don't need to build more. We've got Councillor Walker saying that he wants to build more. I mean, this is, you know, a real symptom of, of, of the, you know, the confusion that exists in the council policy. You don't know whether they're coming or going. And I mean, you know, we feel really strongly that, I mean, they're, they're just, you know, they're hanging themselves by their own policy. They're not looking at each case and their merit. I mean, if you've got a street where... When the council offers to buy the houses, you know, through, through the clearance area, and every single one, not one, one owner in that street, in Railway Street, has, has agreed to sell the, the, their house to the council because they want to stay there. Well, can, can, I, can I... I mean, that, you should be looking them on the merits, not, like, not I, putting a broad policy, you know, and Kent saying... Ted, I'd like, to bring in one, to I'd like to bring in another of our, our studio guests here, because obviously the problems that are being faced by Derwin's side and the difficulties here are problems that are being faced by many other local authorities as well. So, Roy Murphy, uh, from Shelter... Do you find that these problems are common to, to most district councils? Well, well all too often they're, they're common to most councils, in fact. There's a council not far from where we're sitting now who indulges in the same sort of policy. Can I say two things have struck me throughout the programme to date? And that is the sound economic and social sense of the residents on the one hand and the absolute arrogance of the council on the other. We heard on a number of occasions... The council has decided. The council has decided. Now, it strikes me that one of the fundamental mistakes made in housing over the last 50 or 60 years is a very fundamental and simple mistake, and that quite simply is that we don't consult the consumer. Here we have people who are saying, we want to live here. These are nice houses. Palpably, we've seen it on film. They are nice houses. And by destroying those houses, you will destroy a number of things. You will destroy a community. You will destroy houses, the likes of which will never be built again, and you will replace them with the same sort of mundane housing that local authorities all too often are, are, are given to, to, to produce. One more point, and that is this. All too often, we read about people who vandalise houses, and quite properly, such people are punished. Uh, a man who vandalises one house is very likely to be sent to prison. But here we have a possibility of a council vandalising 200 houses. It seems to me that the super vandal is the council. Right, Terry Hodgson? Yes, I, th I think, you know, that uh, Mr Murphy has made some points there. The major point he made was this of consultation. We've been through a local plan exercise with the people of New Kyo. We've done an enormous amount of consultation. We've invited the Residents no, Association no, of New Kyo. Hang on, hang on. We've invited the Residents. We've invited the Residents Association of New Kyo to put forward plans to modernise certain streets in order that we can release them from this uh, particular blight, as you call it. The other point that I'd like to make is that we have a, a, a number of residents there who are determined to make the council look in the worst light possible. The other point is that I'd like to make that we have declared clearance areas on three streets within New Kaya already. And out of the people who are owner occupiers within those streets, within seven days, 
50% of them have come to the council and said we would like to sell our houses to you voluntarily. That is what they want to do. They want to get themselves out of those houses and into other houses. Not necessarily council houses. Alan Westwater, the outside broker. Thank you. Yes, what, counts, what uh, Mr. Hodgson said uh, is quite um, ludicrous in that um, firstly residents are wanting to sell. Once, once the blight is on, once the purchase order has been declared, they've got very little choice except to agree. And as Mr. Hodgson knows, and was stated before, the residents of New Cairo, as you can see here, submitted a comprehensive plan for the area of Cairo, which, in fact, they were wanting to have it declared a general improvement area. So Other what, councils what? of the whole of the country um, have in, uh, instigated general improvement areas with the exception of Derwent side. We they would be delighted to declare to a general improvement area in certain areas of New Cairo, where the fabric the of the houses gives an opportunity to do so. But you, you have, you have had a plan. You said you haven't had a plan. There's, a, there's a plan there. We have a, no, One that is the plan of the New Cairo Residents Association, which is a very prelim preliminary sketch. We have asked we, them the, to fill that the sketch people in, of in New details Cairo and have no opportunity to get that. This, this Mr. Robson, was a, the resident's report, uh, a full detailed survey of the housing stock, proving that they were structurally sound. This two-page flimsy effort is the council's reply. Well, well, indica can I, can I, indica like indicating the seriousness of how, what the council think of new, the people of New Kai. Can, 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 can I bring in Roy, can, Councillor Westwater, I'm sorry, could I, could I bring in our final guest, who is Roy Emerson from the Environmental Health Officers Association. Uh, Roy Emerson, you were involved in a survey which has been sent to the uh, Department of the Environment um, about the way that um, councils are uh, taking up improvement grants and allocating improvement grants. And what did you find in that? Well, we found that out of 300 councils asked, 43% had decided, had been forced, that's the better word, had been forced by government policies to cut back on improvement. 13% to the extent that they're not giving any improvement grants at all. Now, this is really a, a, a terrible situation which many councils, and many councils are in the same position as Derwent side, that with all the will in the world, they cannot now put money in, uh, in the amount that they would like into improvement areas. But in, in a, a rather longer perspective than uh, the period of the present round of public spending cuts, I mean, there are some councils who have not been very keen on doing Im improvement grants in the past. Is that not true? There may be a few, but I don't think they're certainly not in, in I know, well, Derwent side's respect, record. With respect, uh, there are many authorities that don't have any commitment towards a rehabilitation policy. And I think, you know, it's all oh, about talking I, about government cuts. I accept that they exist tragically. But it's also true to say that unless you do have a solid commitment to the rehabilitation of no. the older stock, then you won't have a policy that will cope with it. No, I you think will be into the business of demolition. I think most authorities, and certainly it's been government advice, uh, to do exactly as, new, as uh, in New Cairo has been suggested, that you take out the worst of the houses and you put <coughs> some new houses in to, to bring it's, back, it's to revitalise an respect. area. That Everyone, has been government Everyone. policy for both governments. Hannah, the outside broadcast, I think Hannah was worried to make a point. Yes, they've split the community in half, well in three, not in half. Everyone who knows New Cairo knows that they've, the way they've selected the housing and they've said the sector are the worst is quite wrong. They haven't any way near selected the worst. All they've done is select what is politically right for them to select in, in the areas. What they forget is that they are supposed to be there to represent people. The people don't want to move out. They want the same right to improve their houses as other people. And they are denying this right. Well, they seem to have their priorities wrong in Derwent side. Well, Councillor West, well, you've, you've made that point, but can I, can I yep. turn in these last few minutes of our discussion? Obviously, we, all we can do is set a few rabbits away, we can, we can uh, raise a few issues. Given that we have got public spending cuts and there is financial restriction, which is going to be on you for some years to come, presumably, what is going to happen to communities like New Cairo? Terry Hodgson. Communities like New Cairo and uh, various communities within our area are going to see a deteriorating situation in their housing stock. We're not in a position to do the clearance that we would like to do in the time scale that we would like to do it. We're not in a position to give them improvement grants to improve their houses. Remember, in 1974, the public expenditure on housing was over £7 billion. It's now, in 1984, going to be less than £3 billion. Now, that gives you some idea, given the increasing costs of materials and so forth, about the real cut that there has been in housing, uh, housing action. 
And I think that uh, it's significant that in UK this is just typical of what is going to happen throughout this country. The problems of the older houses in this country is the biggest housing problem we have today. The government have encouraged us to improve, but their policies haven't backed up that advice. They only announced their figures six weeks before the beginning of this financial year. An absolutely ridiculous situation for local authorities who are urged and have been urged to plan. How can you plan six weeks before the year begins? What do you think the future <coughs> holds, Roy Murphy? Well, I think the future in housing, in housing terms, is very, very bleak indeed. Uh, I mean, it's, when we're talking about rehabilitation, it's well worth remembering that this year will see the lowest public building figures since the 1930s. That means that unless we do get into the business of re re rehabbing our older houses, we will have the most enormous housing crisis on our hands in the next few years. That will take years of reversing. There is another point, though, and the fact is we are now, as a nation, only clearing 26,000 houses a year out of 20 million houses in this country. But it's not it's good a letting pathetic all the other figure. fall into disrepair. No, no, the repair of houses is an enormous problem. But don't let's forget that we've got to have a turnover of clearance and new build. Otherwise, we're going to make a tremendous problem for our children and our grandchildren. Salby Walker, given that it's going to be a, it's a basically bleak picture, everyone seems to agree to that, uh, do you not think that the, there's a case for you changing your policy and allowing people like the residents of New Kyle and, uh, and Railway Street to get on and keep the houses they've got and give them a longer life? There's a case for government in areas that, that have houses belong to the last industrial revolution and the fact that we've got many steel uh, workers, again, who are, are feeling the, 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 the cuts as far as government is concerned and the policies of government, that we must have additional monies, in downside in particular, in order to get our housing right, including rehabilitation and improvement. Can I bring in, finally, the people at the outside broadcast? Uh, Audrey Smith, what do you think the future holds for your house, your street? Well, I think it's very, very bleak. If the council had any common sense, they would let people come in and lift the blight off this village, let people come in, the younger people want a chance to buy houses. It's a good chance for starters. First starting off, first getting married. It's a good start for those kids to get on. And that might be a feather in Derwin Side's cap if they did that. But the way Derwin Side's going, if you haven't got a damn course, you're out. That's Have what they reckon. That's, that's the, in the ten point standard, this government law. But. If they think for one minute they're going to throw me out of my home just for the sake of going into one of those decrepit council houses, Audrey then Smith, they've just got I'm another sorry. thing coming. Like we've, we're out of time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us here in the studio. Of course, you can take part in the local phone-ins as well. And we'll be back with a return call on Saturday. Until then, thank you for joining us. Goodbye. If you'd like to join in the brass tax debate, you can do so by ringing into your BBC local radio station. Starting times and dates of the phone-ins vary, and full details appear on the local radio page of the current edition of Radio Times. If you can't join the local radio programmes, why not write to us with your views? Eric Robson will be back on Saturday in return call with a selection of your phone calls and letters, so please be sure your letter reaches us no later than Friday. The address to write to is return call BBC... P.O. Box 27, Manchester.